it is this issue of the technological image that I want to consider, not simply as a mode of image production and reception, but as a fundamental transformation of how we think about images, how they create a world for us, and how they are presented to us. Walter Benjamin's seminal essay, The Work of Art in the Age of Its Technological Reproducibility, brilliantly dealt with photography and its context and the innovation of cinema, thereby not only marking a new stage in the history of the image, but describing fundamental challenges to its nature. My work comes, of course, in the wake of this awesome project. I want to focus it on what I see as a major innovation in the form of the image, the production of an image that moves. The moving image projected on a screen or appearing on a monitor or even skidding across the pages of a flipping thumb book does not truly adhere to these material surfaces in the way that a drawing does to its paper or a painting does to canvas. The moving image seems to float across such, such surfaces and never simply to merge with them. In this sense, it is a virtual image. The moving image exists at any moment as a flow of potential images, which develops in the course or develops its course of time. It the modern image is not caught, not limited to the one-to-one -one relation of mirroring reality with a picture, but rather it depends on a complex triangulation among a technological device, a perceiving subject and a virtual image, which doesn't expire. Stereoscopic images offer another example in which aspects of human vision, in this case, primarily the nature of binocular vision, are triggered by a technical device. The visual experience of depth relies, like motion, on multiple aspects of our sight, and the varying types of stereoscopic images reflect this range of difference. Describing the 3D image as virtual plays a central role in this project because the virtual indicates less a fixed image than a dynamic one, whose essential elements are not the image's relation to a pre existing model, the reality, but the image's essential dependence on the technical device that produces it, the person and the person who looks through it. The moving image entered the 19th century under peculiar circumstances. First, it stressed a dialectical relation between still and moving images. The educational discourse surrounding philosophical toys asserted the primacy of the still image and describe the illusion of motion, putting that in quotes, as the product of this rapid presentation of still images before a eye which gets described as defective. Why in fact should this ability to see a moving image be, why shouldn't it be viewed as a faculty of our vision, as an ability rather than a defect. Herein, I think, lies the legacy and potential of the technological image, not simply reproducing the world or even our perception of it, the camera that sees the same as you, but offering the possibility of exploring and playing with, and therefore extending our perception through technology. By means of technological devices, we actually see moving images produced optically. I maintain that this marks a revolutionary moment in the history of the image. These devices do not represent motion. They produce it. I want to indicate 
the possibilities inherent in the virtual should be opened up rather than shut down. As theorists and practitioners, as historians and as envisioners of the future, these possibilities need to be kept in play. Do you think that um, contemporary forms of illusion present in nowadays vi visual entertainment and mainly as an extension of our visual culture call out for a modern strategy to educate the public to avoid the mistakes of il illusion of knowledge versus real knowledge? If we have a dichotomy between illusion and disillusionment, you know, which is dispelling illusion and revealing what is concealed by the illusion. On the one hand, I certainly endorse that, that, that model of how we think and how we progress and how we uh, work things out. However, I'm also suspicious of it because it is, it takes the form in many ways, and I'm just thinking this now, so it's maybe um, not developed. In many ways, I would say the model that underlies my thinking here is trying to get away from dualities of like truth and illusion and introduce more, at least a triple uh, understanding where we are aware of how illusions are produced, you know, and not just simply, therefore, throw them in the garbage, but think, what did they reveal? Not just what did they conceal, 